In this video, I will be providing an outline for all GCSE Geography students and their teachers of how to plan, carry out and write up a fieldwork inquiry. I will be sharing with you an outline of a fieldwork inquiry that I used with my own GCSE Geography class, which I hope will provide you with some direction and clarity in delivering your own fieldwork investigation. I will provide an overview of the different sections of the fieldwork inquiry, the introduction, the risk assessment, methodology, the results, analysis and conclusion, and finally, the evaluation. The first stage of setting up a fieldwork investigation is to determine your inquiry question. The inquiry question you come up with must link to a module that you have studied in class. For my GCC class, we decided to set up a fieldwork question linked to the Coastal Landscapes module. So our inquiry question was, how effective are wooden groins at preventing longshore drift along Eastbourne Beach? It is essential that you remember your inquiry question because you will be required to write this down in your unit 3 exam. Before you carry out any geographical investigation, you must consider the risks that are involved and how you might be able to reduce those risks. The risks should be linked to the area of study that you are visiting. For example, the risks that you find along a coastline may be very different to those you might find within an urban setting. For our GCC study along Eastbourne Beach, we considered that the three biggest risks would be the dangers of the sea itself, the dangers of moving traffic along the main coastal road, and lastly, getting lost. Once we decided on these three biggest risks, we then considered what the appropriate solutions would be to ensure that we reduced those risks. Our solution to the first risk was to ensure we didn't get too close to the water, especially if there were destructive waves on the day we visited. Our solution to the danger of traffic was to ensure we were always concentrating and looking left and right when crossing any roads. And finally, our solution to potentially getting lost was to make sure we followed instructions and we didn't walk off from the area we were working in. For our investigation at Eastbourne Beach, we collected secondary data before we visited and we collected a range of primary data on the day we visited. It is important that the primary data that you collect is not only quantitative, but is also qualitative. The quantitative data collection methods that we conducted were measuring the height of the wooden groins and a pedestrian count. The qualitative data collection methods that we conducted were a questionnaire, a field sketch and taking photographs and finally a SWOT analysis. To conduct this data collection method, we selected a stretch of the coast where there were several groins that we could measure. 
we run the tape measure along each groin from the top of the beach to where the groin meets the sea. We then divided this length by three. These three points would be the points of the groins which would be measured. Each side of the wooden groin was labelled A and B. At these three points on both sides of the wooden groin, side A and side B, we then used our metre ruler to measure the height. To do this, we put the end of the ruler on top of the sediment and measured up until the top of the groin. The purpose of this method was to show us if the sediment which is being transported along the coastline due to the process of longshore drift is being stopped by the wooden groins. If we discovered that one side has a greater height than the other, then that would suggest that the wooden groins are effective. To conduct this data collection method, we selected a stretch of the coastline where there was a pedestrian walkway. We located three points along this walkway. We worked in pairs. We labelled ourselves person A and person B. Person A counted how many people walked past on the left and person B counted how many people walked past on the right. We did this for a duration of 60 seconds at each of the three sites. The purpose of this data collection method was to determine if the beach is popular with people visiting it. And if it is, it would suggest that the wooden groins, which prevent the sediment from moving down the coastline, is effective. At the same three locations we selected for the pedestrian count, we also asked three people our questionnaire. Our questions aimed to find out the reasons people had visited Eastbourne Beach and to find out their views on the effectiveness of the wooden groins. The purpose of this qualitative data collection method is to consider other people's perceptions and opinions of this coastal defence method. We completed a labelled field sketch showing the human and physical geographical features of Eastbourne coastline. With specific reference to the wooden groins and the direction of the longshore drift. We developed this further by using our mobile phones to take photographs which we could then annotate once we were back in school. The purpose of this method was to help inform our study with the use of a visual and develop a deeper sense of place when analysing the data. Our final qualitative data collection method to complete before we left Eastbourne was a SWOT analysis. Using our own perceptions of what we saw on the day, we wrote down what we considered to be the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats of the wooden groins along Eastbourne Beach. The purpose of this method was to apply our own geographical knowledge of wooden groins along a built up coastal area to summarise our own observations from the day. To achieve the higher end marks in this section, you will need to consider the different ways of presenting your data. Potential methods could be the use of GIS and maps, tables, graphs and charts. It is important that you do consider which presentation technique is the most appropriate for the data that you are attempting to present. For example, are you attempting to present data which is continuous or in categories? Are you dealing with numbers or percentages? How can you present your data 
spatially? These are questions that you will need to discuss with your teacher to ensure that the methods that you do use are appropriate. Annotated photographs are a fantastic way of displaying data because they may show geographical evidence which can inform your investigation. For our particular study at Eastbourne Beach, we used for, um, annotated photographs and our photographs showed a clear difference in the height of the wooden groin compared to the level of the sediment. GIS, Geographical Information Systems, is another excellent way of displaying data because it will allow you to overlay different types of data which will allow you to create maps which may show patterns and relationships between different sets of data. There are five things you must do when analysing your data. Number one, you need to highlight any patterns that your data shows. Number two, you need to make connections between different sets of data. Number three, highlight any anomalies. This is data that doesn't appear to show the general trend. Number four, Make an explanation for any connections that you have identified. And number five, provide reasons for why some data may not follow the general trends of the rest of your data collection. When you are analysing your data, you will need to use quantitative statistical techniques, such as working out the mean, mode and range of your data. In addition to this, it is essential that you use qualitative techniques such as drawing on your annotations from your photo analysis. As these methods will provide evidence towards your overall conclusion. Your conclusion needs to be a focused summary of your results. The key points to consider when writing your conclusions are Number one, ensure you link your findings back to your primary aim of the investigation. Number two, highlight the most significant piece of data from your findings. Number three, answer the question, does your investigation support your overall hypothesis? Number four, Reference reasons for any anomalies within your data. And number five, to finish up with, make a brief comment about the geographical significance of your investigation and outline how your findings from your study can help other people. This final section is an opportunity for you to reflect on your data collection methods and how reliable you believe your data, your results and your conclusion to be. Things to consider in this section would be Number one, are my sampling sizes big enough? Number two, did I visit the site of study enough times? Number three, were my sampling techniques appropriate? Number four, did I use scientific equipment or was it a little bit too basic? Number five, was the location I visited suitable for my investigation? And number six, how reliable was my secondary data? Thank you for watching my video. I hope it has provided you with some direction towards completing your own fieldwork investigation. Please do subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram and on Twitter for many more videos which will provide you with support and guidance through your 
Geography GCSE.